what's up guys uh it is friday so we're doing another live stream and um it's another licks live stream so i want to share a lick with you guys and uh well it's actually kind of a, an idea or a concept uh, that i um, accidentally used on uh saturday's jam uh, that one was uh, like a slow uh, blues, uh, slow Hendrix style blues. Um, tried to put a little sort of Mitch, Mitch uh, Mitchell uh, feel in the drums. I love his style as a drummer. Obviously the uh, original drummer from the uh, Jimi Hendrix experience. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that track is down below. It's linked down below. And uh, so in the solo for that, I played a lick which I like to refer to as uh, the Red House Lick, the Jimi Hendrix um, Red House Lick. And uh, I'll show you what the lick is, but also more importantly, I will show you how to use that lick in your soloing and how you, know, how you can actually apply it to a variety of situations so that it's not just you know, this one thing that you've learned, but, but obviously that it becomes uh, you know, uh, an integral part of your language so that you can pull it out when it when it can really make a, a, a big difference in your solo. So, um, so yeah, I'll show you all of that stuff. And um, I'll just tell you where it comes from originally. Obviously, it comes from Red House. So Red House, you know, you guys uh, have heard the song, I'm sure. Uh, there's a, loads of different versions. Many of the live versions have um, the, the version of the lick that I, that I like. So I'm going to uh, show you that. Um, and I'm going to play it in B flat because it was often played in that key. Um, but uh, the track that I am um, using and that I just put out, that's in G. All right, so we're going to learn the actual lick in G. It's just a more common key, you know, for, uh, for, for guitar players. So I, I wanted to have that jam and have that lick be in G. So, um, so yeah, obviously, as always, um, the uh, tab for the full solo is uh, linked below as well. So you can go in and jam this lick on the track and you can also learn the actual uh, solo or, or just that lick or the whole solo if you want. That uh, is linked below as well. There's a direct link to the, uh, uh, direct link to the um, tab and uh, it's on my Patreon. So uh, there's also a, a general link to the Patreon. That's where all of my tabs go. You can gain access just like that to all of my tabs. It's like over 150 tabs. I think over 160 tabs by now. Uh, so quite a lot of stuff on there uh, by now. And there are lots of lessons. Obviously, I'm putting out lots of lessons as well these days uh, on there for these kind of deep dive vibes. You know, I'm really trying to uh, be uh, as much... Uh, uh, I'm trying to be, you know, of as much service as I can to you guys. So, uh, so there we go, guys. Um, <laughs> Uh, let me just show you where it comes from and I'll show you in B flat. So it's that the very intro of um, Red House and it goes And then so on uh, all, all of that stuff, but it's really just it's that thing that you know that's basically using the chord tones and there's vibrato and there's uh, you know various things that we can get into so yeah that is what we're doing guys that intro lick for red house that uh, you can use in lots of different ways and that I just used in the um, Saturday jam so uh, so here we go guys let's go to the key of G like this so basically, uh, I'll just show you the uh, the whole lick as it uh, as it plays out to start with, uh, and uh, it'll basically be exactly as I play in the solo. So if you want to see it played, you know, if you want to have it repeated, just click the link to the uh, to the actual track. It's the it's basically the four uh, the four first bars of the intro solo to the track. So you can always uh, you know go and reference uh, the actual solo that I'm teaching you a part of right now. Uh, link below, yeah. It's that slow Hendrix blues in G and full tab also linked below. So here we go. Uh, so basically we form this little um, 
shape here. And I'm using my third finger on the seventh fret of the top E string. That's that B note there. I'm using my first finger on the sixth fret of the B string. And I'm using my second finger on the seventh fret of the G string. Like that. And uh, I believe it is important that I point out these are chord tones, okay? It's always great to be able to see or, or have an awareness of like what the notes are in relation to what the harmonic context is, okay? And that's very important here because you're basically playing chord tones. This whole figure is totally just chord tones happening. So you got your third finger there, first finger, second finger. Now the third finger is playing the B, that's the major third of G. First finger is playing that F natural. That's the flat seven of a G7, so a G dominant chord, still a chord tone. And that note there, the D, the second figure, well, that is the fifth, right? So chords, you know, a basic chord consists, a triad consists of the one, the three, and the five of the scale. So now we have the five and the three. We're not playing the one, but we are playing the flat seven. So it's basically a four note chord where we're leaving out the one. Okay, that was a bit of theory right there. But that is the, uh, that's the shape. And uh, the way that I play it, and that Hendrix very often plays it, is you start on the uh, top string, and then you just go down the strings. And while you're doing that, you give him a little vibrato, you give him a little shake. Like that. So basically, um, you're playing triplets, right? So one and a two and a three and a four and a... Super simple. So one and a two and a three and a four and a... And that's the principle. That's all it is, okay? That it's basically, that's the principle. And now what's gonna happen is we're gonna move that principle around. I'll, I'll talk more about how you can do it in, in any context uh, in a bit. But first, uh, I'll just show you how, what actually happens. So what happens here after the first one, by the way, you can slide into it if you like. Um, like that. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna play the same thing, not for a G7, for the next chord, which is uh, a C7. Okay, that's the four chord, basic blues. Uh, and you're gonna slide up. To the 12th fret with your third finger. There we go, so that. your second um, shape so the same shape just moved up to fit the C chord so again it's the major third of the C the flat seven and the fifth of the um, C chord the C7 chord okay now just slide up and remember to give it that like you know really cool um, bit of vibrato so you know playing it all like Pan like that, less interesting, more vibey if you you know, especially that you know, if that's a little I don't want to say out of tune, but you know, a little sort of shaky, well, that gives it that kind of bluesy charm in my book, anyway. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so that uh, is the first part of it. That those are the first two. Um, bars. So, there we go. And all that's going to happen now is uh, we're going to take that same shape and we're going to, it goes back to the G7. So, standard blues goes one, four, one, one in the first four bars, right? Now, what's gonna happen is, uh, we, instead of going back down to playing the um, G7 shape down there, we actually go up. All the way up there to play the same shape, but 
up the uh, octave. So, such a cool, in my book anyway, cool like quirky um, bluesy sound. Like that. And uh, yeah, what you want to do is, uh, well, let's just uh, find the notes first of all. So third finger again. Uh, now it's on the 19th fret of the D string. First finger on the um, 18th fret of the B string. And then uh, also on the 19th fret, but on the G string, we got the second finger. And what you want to do is, you know, give it that cool uh, bit of vibrato, you know, make it nice and quirky. Okay, but now this time around, I actually add a little variation, which you can add too. And uh, it is to add, I'm basically adding the little finger. So I'm adding the, the fourth of the chord, uh, just above the, um, the third of the chord. For that shape there. So I'm using my little finger for that. So little finger goes on the, uh, it's quite high up uh, on the 20th fret of the um, top E string, right? And the other two fingers stay where they are. So just try that. Um, going from from 19, 18, 19 to 20, 18, 19. Like that. So that's the little variation. So um, starting from bar three, again, if you've just joined, um, the uh, solo that I am taking this from is uh, linked below. You can practice on that jam track and also you can get the full tab for this if you like. It's on my Patreon, also linked below. So. That is how the third and fourth bars go. So basically, uh, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, and then on the four, you go give that, you make it kind of a tension before you release back to that. So it's like, you know, just a little bit of extra tension in there. So one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, and then back to. Okay, uh, do you know what, I'll uh, just um, play the track for you guys. Uh, I'll play it with the track so you can see uh, how this is meant to be. Uh, the track is actually uh, on my latest blues album that came out um, just days ago. Um, it's called Into the Blues Volume 5. It's track 6 from that album and it's actually free to download, I forgot to say that. Uh, you can also check that below. Uh, you got Into the Blues Volume 5 there and the track is Free to download, so uh, check it out, guys. Uh, it's a fun, uh, simple, slow blues in G. Okay, so um, let me just play it for you, and uh, you can uh, see what the track sounds like and how this uh, lick sits within the track. I'll do it from the same place. Uh, here we go. Let's turn it up a little bit. That's the solo. Uh, of course, as you know, I do a whole chorus on the solo, so um, uh, you know you can dig into more licks of that kind of style uh, if you want to check out the the solo and and the tab and all that sort of stuff. Um, but let's um, just talk a little bit about how you can actually apply that lick to any context, because that really you know that's 
that's what you want to be doing, right? You know, you want to uh, you want to be able to translate this to loads of different contexts, so that so that it's not just this isolated thing that you can use on just one thing. So obviously, you can use this lick on any like uh, dominant chord or any major chord where it would fit that you play a minor seven like that. So I mean, that's most blues, okay? Most blues progressions. Most blues is gonna have a vibe where you can play the minor pentatonic. And you can also add that major third and get that real bluesy kind of vibe going. Uh, and uh, let's talk about how you can take that chord and um, and apply it, you know what I mean? How you can actually apply it to um, any chord. Uh, and I wanna show you guys how I, how I do it here. So uh, when you have your G chord, okay? Um, you have your E shape, caged system. Maybe you guys know about the cage system. Anyways, it's the most common um, position really is you know it's the box position for the um, the minor pentatonic here that I'm talking about just the, the very most basic thing the thing that most guitarists learn as the first thing when they venture into soloing so um, maybe you, you've uh, already mastered or somewhat mastered that one so what we're gonna do is we're gonna be in that shape and uh, Try and walk up the uh, scale from, from the root note there, which is uh, in this case for G, it's your, uh, your fifth fret on the D string, like that. And uh, now go to the next note. That one there, the third fret on the G string, fourth fret on the, um, sorry, fifth fret on the um, G string, that's the fourth of the chord. So basically the, the, the three first notes in the scale starting from the root note there. Okay, now what we're gonna do is you're gonna um, go up two frets from that note to get to what's called the fifth. And obviously the fifth is the, the chord tone, right? It's the, what you would call the fifth of a G chord or the fifth in a G major scale or, you know, uh, I don't want to get too deep into the to the theory, but so what you do, what you can always do is count up and get to that note right there. Two frets up from that note. Now you're in this position and then all you got to do is put your second finger there and you can... Um, you can play the chord from there. Okay, so that's one little trick, you know, one, one little way to find that note. Right there, so. There you have it for G. Let's find it for C. So, you're gonna find your... minor pentatonic that we all know and you're going to do the same thing you're going to go one two three notes up from from the root note and then you're going to go um, two frets up from that that's where you find your fifth and then you're going to switch your finger around to use your second finger and then you can uh you can do it right there. You got your shape for C. And uh, actually later in the solo, there's a phrase that goes where I'm just I'm playing the D, walking it down chromatically actually to the C. So, you know, you can move this shape around as much as you like. You know, whenever there's a, a, a major chord or, or a, a, certainly when there's a, a dominant chord, you can whip that out just like that and it'll sound great. So, um, that's that for C. Let's find it for D. So you got your D note there on the D string. And you walk it up. There it is. I hope that makes sense to you guys. Just to give you like a, 
you know, a, a way to, um, to navigate um, around uh, to, find, to find that lick within your minor pentatonic. I know that most, most of us, you know, like to kind of cent center uh, things around the minor pentatonic. So if you do that, you know, you, you're, uh, you can do it just from that. Let's do it from one more key. Uh, so if we're in A, we like to play an A, I know that. There's that note on the D string. Now walk up the scale, the, the minor pentatonic. There it is. That E note right there. That's your fifth. And that is the start of that beautiful phrase. So there we go, guys. You can find it now from any uh, chord. You can find that lick and use that lick. So uh, I hope that you guys find that uh, beneficial. And um, of course, if you want to do the actual um, Red House intro, we'll stay in the key of A for now. You just do that. Then you move it down a semitone. So just move the whole shape down one fret. And then back up again. That's your Red House intro right there. Vibrating everybody and uh, have a good weekend. We got a new track coming out tomorrow and Hope you will enjoy it's actually a track with a special guest So I look forward to sharing that and I'll be back with another live stream on Friday next Friday and uh, Yeah, loads more stuff coming out. Obviously the Wednesday warm-ups are gonna keep on coming as well So uh, there we go guys happy jamming and have a good weekend. I'll see you soon.